Welcome to Startup Health TV, I'm Logan Plaster. Diseases of the heart, cardiovascular diseases, are the leading cause of death worldwide, causing the deaths of something like 18 million people a year. Uh, one of the standards of care for heart disease is the echo exam, which is an ultrasound of the heart, which are then read manually by cardiologists. The problem is that millions more people have heart disease or are at risk of heart disease than there are cardiologists and specialists to read these exams. Into that gap steps my guest today, Dr. Carolyn Lamb, the co-founder of Us2AI, a startup that Startup Health backed in 2018. You see, at Us2AI, Dr. Lamb and her team are using artificial intelligence to automate the process of reading these echo exams. By doing that, they're democratizing the process and opening up access to this life-saving care to really millions more people. What's really exciting and what we're going to talk about today is how close we are to having this technology save people's lives. Us2 AI just received FDA approval and they've partnered with one of the world's biggest device manufacturers in order to make this software available to more people. We'll get into all that in this very exciting update with an inspirational founder. Stick around. Dr. Lamb, thank you so much for taking the time on Startup Health TV. Can't wait to get an update on us two AI. Thanks so much for having me, Logan. We've got a lot of developments. I'm very excited to share. I can't wait to hear about it. So just for our viewers who might not be familiar with us two AI and what you've built, give us a flyover, the platform, the product, tell us all about it. Great. So us two AI is on a mission to automate the fight against heart disease. Heart disease being our top killer around the world, myself being a cardiologist and being dismayed at the fact that one in three of us still die of it, despite the fact that a lot of advances have enabled us to save everyone from the hospitalizations and deaths from heart disease, if only we could detect it earlier. And so us to ai really aims to I use the word that's been always used, but it's democratized the tool that cardiologists use the most to look at the heart and to detect heart disease early. We just use echocardiography, which is ultrasound of the heart, very safe modality. We use it all the time to detect heart disease before a person even knows they've got heart disease. The problem with echocardiography is it's very difficult to understand. I've trained for years just to be able to read, to look at the images and kind of figure out which, which chamber of the heart I'm looking at. Is there something wrong with it or not? But basically our software automates that completely and really helps anyone tell from their heart images whether they've got a normal heart or not. Now, I know you are a, you're a world-renowned cardiologist. I think it's safe to say that and you've seen this at a, at a global health level. Um, help us understand just the global impact of this challenge, just so that we can wrap our heads around it. Yeah. And I would really like there to step into where I'm an expert, which is heart failure. So I'm a heart failure cardiologist and heart failure is that final common pathway where if you don't have well-controlled high blood pressure and diabetes, and if you survive your heart attack, all of that leads to heart failure. So people understand kidney failure. They don't understand heart failure, that it's a chronic condition that has treatments. However, you need to scan the heart to make the diagnosis. And in heart failure, one in six diagnoses gets missed in the elderly when they go to the general practitioner. Okay. The problem is the symptoms of heart failure are very nonspecific. They're like, I'm feeling a bit breathless, a bit tired. I've got swollen ankles. Well, guess what? Can you put up your hand? Because I think we've all kind of felt a little bit tired when we exercise and so on, a bit breathless. And that's the problem. You actually need to look at the heart to make the diagnosis. So by automating the interpretation, by making sure that what is being read is as good as having an expert sitting next to you to look at those pictures, 
that's what we've done. And so we imagine that a general practitioner may be able to therefore screen very quickly using ultrasound a patient who they suspect may have heart failure and pick up these diagnoses, institute the right treatments early enough. The sad fact remains that 80% of cases of heart failure present after an unplanned hospitalization, which means it could have been prevented if only we had diagnosed it earlier. Okay. Okay. So automating the, the process of doing heart exams, democratizing heart exams so more people can get this, this kind of care faster. Uh, let's talk about your success, kind of where you're at in your journey. A big reason why we're having this call is because of big news that's come out from the FDA and partners of yours. So, so tell us kind of where you're at in the process. Oh, Logan, thank you for giving me the platform to say we got FDA approval. Oh, it has been such a journey. I'd love to tell you about it. It's fresh news that the FDA has approved our automated platform for the measurement of 23 echo parameters that are the core parameters you need to do a basic heart exam and to honestly say heart is normal or not. Help Let us me, understand what, yeah. how significant that is. Yeah, because, yeah. You know, people who are in the, you know, the device world, they'll get that. But our viewers might not understand how significant FDA approval is. Oh, OK. But I want to tell you about the study that led to the FDA approval, just to answer your question. So we had to perform a study in 600 patients wow. whom we've never seen, echoes from the US that were read at the top echo core lab of the world, Brigham, by top human expert readers, and not just one of them, three of them. And our automated reading had to be completely interchangeable with those three human expert readers. Wow. That was the bar that the FDA set for us for all 23 measurements. So you can imagine what a sigh of relief when we passed that test. So when we did that already, we were already celebrating because we knew we had already discussed the FDA say that's a bar. If you meet it, you get it. And now we've got it. Now, while we were doing this study, what we ended up showing too is that the variability between the machine read and one human being was even less than between human and human. I was going to yeah. ask that because the variability is such a big issue in, in is. readings these days. It is. It is because it's so highly manual. So what yeah. we do at the moment is doctors spend hours in a dark room and we're just watching these moving images and then freeze it where we think it looks best. And then we literally take out little little calipers and kind of dot it and trace it out like a five-year-old and yeah. make those measurements and then determine whether those are normal or not. The AI reads every frame of every video that's available. So there's no like that random choosing of one because the human being cannot measure umpteen you know, yeah. number of images in a single study, but the, but the machine choose the top quality images and the top quality measurements to then report it. And it's those that are completely reproducible for the machine. In other words, you give us the same study, we'll give you the same result 100% of the time. Human beings can't do that. You give me human being, well-trained nonetheless, I trained yeah. at Mayo Clinic uh, to, to read the study, and I will be off by a little bit every time you give me the same study. So in other words, we've cut down intra-observer variability to zero, and inter-observer variability we've even reduced. And finally, this is going to blow your mind, guess how long it usually takes a human being to read a study? Gosh, uh, 30 minutes? Very close, very close. So, yeah. so that's for an easy study and so on. Now, if you're at the core lab, there are metrics that they've measured. It takes 40 minutes on average because right. they're very, you know, they're very top of the class sort of measurements. 40 minutes per study for a human being. Guess how long it took us to and this we measured just for the analysis. Uh, three minutes. 1.2 minutes on average. Wow. 1.2 images. Has, so any for, product, yeah. has there any for, product like this ever gone through the FDA before, this uh, autom automated yes. heart exam? Yes. So we had a predicate, but the predicate 
And anything before us had only automated one measurement. Wow. And that's called left ventricular ejection fraction. So, I mean, it, that's already a big advance for our field. And in fact, that was our predicate for FDA. However, please note, just with one measurement, you cannot say that the heart is normal. You can only say the left lower chamber squeezing function is normal. That's left ventricular ejection fraction. However, that can be normal and the valves could still be stuck or leaky. The right could be not normal, the right side. The upper chamber could be not normal, which is the H on the left or the right. This is what I mean by there are standards produced by the American Society of Echo, the British Society of Echo, the European Cardiovascular Imaging Association, all of which list measurements and views that are basic minimum requirements. That's the list that we read. So it is landmark. You said 22, 23 different views. Is that what it was? 23 different measurements have measurements. been FDA validated, okay. but frankly, the software produces much, much more. 80, 90 measurements, but Interesting. we'll just stay focused one at a time. <laughs> so, I mean, one feeling I have with FDA, with other companies I've talked to is on one hand, it feels like a mountaintop at the, uh, on another level, it is just the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's just the very beginning of something uh, totally new. So talk to me about what FDA approval uh, opens you up to do. Oh, great question. So this means it's ready for clinical use. And because it's ready for clinical use, our company realized we need to team up with the best hardware in the world. Now, us to AI is only software. If we teamed up with the best in class hardware, which is mobile echo, something that you could carry in your purse and just plug into your smart device. Can you imagine if we have the best quality hardware that can also do all kinds of modality of imaging exactly as you would expect from the big cart based machines? Mm -hmm. Wow, you'd have a complete solution in your hands. And that's what we did. And you'd so be able to have share that. Exactly. I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to jump in. I just got so excited because the portability of that opens up the access to the to the scans to so many people. Absolutely. And this is what we did in our partnership with Econos. Econos has a Cosmos device, a point of care hardware device that's the best in class, best quality images and does things that no other hardware in that category can do, which is Doppler measurements, including both PW and CW, sorry to be technical, but it's really important, sure. and tissue Doppler, all of okay. which are critical for the proper diagnosis of things like heart failure and valve disease. And so we immediately teamed with them and together now have a platform that is mobile and also now has AI to guide acquisition. So we've oh, got wow. AI to buy the acquisition, AI to interpret acquisition, uh, the acquired images, and therefore produce a report. It's so important that it's the best quality images because with good quality data, you get a good quality report. We are so sure we have this. We're moving faster than we can even keep up with. All over the world, we're performing demos and having a lot of fantastic results with the combined solution. When you say using AI to guide acquisition, uh, you mean that if I'm not a total specialist and I have this in my hand, uh, it might say, hey, tilt a little bit, move a little bit. It would kind of guide the acquisition of the image. Totally. And you explained it even better than I could have. Exactly. There are even like red and green bars to tell got you it. when you've got it right. Okay. And little instructions with the probe. You know, sometimes you can't follow the instructions, but the probe is there to, they have a picture of the probe to show you how to twist and turn and got press. It. It's, it's really cool. So, so talk to me about what this means. I'm envisioning community health workers or primary care doctor. Does it go that far? Talk to me about like what this means for the access to this kind of test? Uh, you've guessed it exactly right. It does mean that we can now push this out to the community. And it's in fact efforts that are ongoing now. We've tested in a large, beautiful study called the OPERA study in Glasgow, where almost 800 patients were recruited to offload this long echo wait list that's been happening in Glasgow. And guess what? Having this mobile solution 
does short and of course people love it we're doing a test study in tunisia where we're trying to go to homes with the mobile solution wow. and you know asking patients how do you like that do you prefer to have it in your home or do you prefer to travel yeah. for hours and come to the hospital just to get an echo that could be safely done at home so we we are very serious and and coupling it with a robust training program so that's very important a training program so that people feel confident to use the mobile solution will hold your hand as you start and I, I can really see this taking off. Um, you may have mentioned this, but just thinking about the accessibility issue, I'm not sure if you've mentioned, you know, how difficult is it for most people to get in to see a cardiologist? You know, a lot of specialties like this have shortages. And of course, if you're in Tunisia, um, you're going to have a, a, a lower number of physicians per yes. thousand people. So explain to me, you know, how difficult it is to get this kind of access currently. Yeah, and so even in Glasgow, look, very developed, beautiful country, and the waiting list for echoes is months. Mm. And by medical months. standards, months. I mean, you, and by you, medical you, standards, we're supposed to get it immediately, right? right. If not, but that's why patients get hospitalized. You could have a, a heart attack at any time. So you're saying you, you are at risk of a heart attack, and you might wait months to get to a get simple, the echo, to get the yeah. scan. Something that's so safe, right? You, I mean, we, we point ultrasound at an unborn fetus. It's, it's mm. so safe. You could even do a medical selfie if only you had an yeah. expert sitting next to you, which yeah. is kind of what the AI is. It, it's, the, it's the AI that can guide you and help you to understand, are you looking at the right thing? Even as a screening, it's just really, really important. Yeah. Now, I understand that you all have inked partnerships with some of the biggest pharmaceutical names in the world. Uh, and I wonder if you could just speak to kind of why they saw us to AI as a unique opportunity and what that means for your progress. Well, I'm very fortunate and Zeneca, who has an act on heart failure movement. So they, they, first of all, have created some wonderful therapeutics to keep patients out of hospital. But then, you know, in recognizing that a lot of patients are not even getting the diagnosis and landing up in hospital too late. They've really been supportive. Uh, they supported the OPERA study, which I'm very grateful for, which produces more evidence that then allows the rollout to more and more places. So AstraZeneca is one company that, that um, is very hot about heart failure. And then in pulmonary hypertension, we've been very grateful to have the support of Janssen or JNJ. Um, and it's an important uh, fact that pulmonary hypertension, which means something wrong in the right side of the heart rather than the left, the right, um, is always missed. It's missed a lot because people are just focusing on the left heart. And so they've also partnered with us to help us increase awareness of that and our algorithm is standalone, even without the hardware. It could be sitting on servers in hospitals or clinics doing the screening for you and kind of highlighting, hey, you might have missed this case of pulmonary hypertension, which kind of happened during our validation study. It was very interesting to see that there was the case hmm. where machine picked it up and the three humans didn't. Interesting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm not shocked. Um, Dr. Lamb, that's really the time that we have. I'm so inspired by the work that you're doing. You know, my last question is just sort of give you an opportunity to, you know, give us that health moonshot vision. If you, you know, looking out five, 10 years, maybe not even that long, and sort of saying, look, if this really, if this really works and scales with the way that we think it can, it really gets adopted, um, what kind of human impact are we looking at here? And, um, you know, just tell us how that gets you excited in the morning. Oh, wow. I think I'd like to paint an analogy here. So I think ECHO is now where ECG was decades ago. ECG, electrocardiogram of the heart, used to be something you could only get in the hospitals and where we sat in dark rooms using calipers to measure and make a report. Mm -hmm. Now you got your phone, your, your device on your wrist that can track your heart rate and can tell you if you've got an arrhythmia. I think that's where Echo is going on the moonshot that now you've got a device you can carry everywhere soon. I hope we'll be even doing medical selfies and being able to take charge of our own heart health. Amazing. 
Thank you for your time, Dr. Lamb. Congrats on the FDA approval and your partnership with the device manufacturer to really marry the software with the hardware. Can't wait to see what us two AI does next. Thanks so much, Logan. All right, thanks for your time. Be well. A quick word about this show, in case you're new around here. At Startup Health, we believe in broadcasting the stories of health moonshot progress, the stories of the most forward-thinking entrepreneurs in health. If you want more of this good news about healthcare's problem solvers, make sure that you subscribe to our channel, hit that notification button, and follow us on social media at Startup Health.